Hey, how's it going? This is your Daily Sweet Talk for September 6th, 2024. What do you call an easygoing rabbit? Hoppy go lucky. Okay. Um, great. Yesterday, uh, I started telling a story I had improvised to my friend uh, through instant message when they were stuck on a train uh, about a farmer and a turn up. And that's all I'm. I'm that's all the recap you're gonna get because I need to get through this. Just watch the last one. It was the first half of the story. You're not gonna understand anything. Just watch it. If you if you're gonna watch this, just then I'm continuing right now. Just then, a little door-shaped patch of dirt opened at the bottom of the cavern wall. The farmer spied intently as a little mole-like creature, which was in fact just a regular mole, strolled out from the other side and closed the dirt door behind them. They groggily lumbered over to the desk. News to the desk newspaper under one arm steaming cup of beverage in the other hand and slippers on both feet taking a seat they pressed a previously unseen button on the underside of the desk and a display of lights lit up from within the turnip the creature cracked their knuckles and neck and a keyboard flipped over from another hidden panel on the desk right away they began vigorously typing inputting commands the farmer's pathetic human mind could never begin to fathom but they did understand this the creature, or perhaps their associates, had used an unfathomable knowledge of vegetable circuit power to convert this gargantuan turnip into a supercomputer the likes of which had never seen before. And they were using it to play Minesweeper? The farmer couldn't believe their eyes. Not because, the mole or the Not because the mole or the computer, really, but just because this unmatched power is being used to play a DOS-level computer game. The lights inside the turnip lit up to display a frowning yellow face, indicating a game over, I think. The mole squealed in outrage. Clearly this, clearly this was a common occurrence. The farmer couldn't help but laugh at the pathetic display. What a waste of a perfectly good vegetable. The mole, spying their intruder, growled at the insult. At the push of another button the, hidden beneath the desk, all the lights inside the turnip began to glow a bright white and the cavern began to shake. The farmer's mouth hung open in shock as they quaked in fear. The mole just stared up and grinned sourly before taking a sip of their cooled beverage. As the lights shined brighter, the farmer covered their face with their hands, fearing it may be the end for them. But just then, they felt themselves being pulled up from the ground. Out they were drugged, dragged through, through the dirt until finally their head popped up to the surface. They squinted into the sky and saw the fat bird flying away, and then turned their head to meet the face of their rescue. It was Lisa, you know, the random passerby from earlier. Did you watch the last one? I don't know why you're watching this if you didn't. As they continued down the road with the weight of the unnecessary as they continued down the road with the weight of the unnecessary insult hanging over their head, they were nearly blown to bits with a when a landmine exploded inches in front of them. Having faced this near death experience, they earned a burst of confidence that led them back to confront the source of their insult in an effort to seize back the mood of the day, which meant the first thing the farmer heard when they came face to face with their rescue party was Where do you get off? I, I don't, the farmer stammered, but they weren't able to find their words as the rumbling beneath their feet interrupted the confrontation. Suddenly, the single radish leaf that had been poking through the center of the patch disappeared beneath the ground. No, the farmer cried as they dove towards the opening. Peering inside, they could see the turnip lowering, lowering further and further down into the ground as the rumbling gradually dissipated and was replaced with whatever ambient farm noises would usually be filling the air. Pigs and chickens or some shit, I don't know. Lisa stared down at the farmer, curled up into the fetal position and lying in the dirt as tears welled up in their eyes. Um, well, uh, yeah, serves, serves you right, I guess, they muttered before awkwardly shuffling away from the pathetic display. The farmer laid there for what felt like hours, but it was probably more like eight minutes, until finally an idea popped into their head. On the next fortnight, as the biannual farmer's market was installed up and down the road, one of the McGrickle's seven foster children came out to see the farmer, who was named McGrickle, by the way, in case you forgot, standing by the turnip patch with a hose leading into the hole. What you doing? inquired the child. Why can't you see the vision? This here is the world's largest turnip hole, probably, and I'm fixing to make it the world's largest swimming hole. But surely that wouldn't translate, the child reasoned. And this is a farmer's market. Why would anyone go for, why would anybody go for a swim? The farmer frowned. For the love of God, just let me have this. I'm ruined, you understand? This is all I have left. The child stared for a moment as the farmer staked a signpost in the ground, advertising the turnip hole swim spot, before walking back to the house and immediately stepping on a landmine. Jamothy! cried the farmer, not remembering their name. The end? Probably, yeah. Um, they asked if I used uh, AI to make the story uh, when I when I improvised all this. And I said, no, I don't need AI. I used RY. Um, but clearly I couldn't think of an ending to the story or this video.